Okay, we're gonna try and do the live thing. It's a bit of a bit of a disaster, but that's okay. We're just gonna treat this um, more like a video, I think. Um, I have uh, I was prepping for the stream like all day, but alas. As soon as I hit go live, everything crumbles, right? So, but I am heard and seen. Yeah. Hmm? There are two people here. There is at least that. Yeah. Okay. And a couple. Um, so let's just let's get right into it. It's going to be a little bit shorter, I guess, tonight now. Um, and we might even just kind of, I don't know, treat this as a as an unofficial, as an unofficial test, maybe. Um, okay. So I guess we'll go into the uh, little demo bit here for blue whales. Um, <laughs> okay. So. I thought whales would be a great opportunity to talk about um, line of action um, and showing movement in just in the form of these like massive ocean cylinders. So the line of action is basically this central line that you build all of your forms around. And whales are really good for that because they are just sort of like a single line. They don't have all of these gangly limbs coming off. So they're uh, a nice opportunity to practice this thing. And we build on what we did with the bumblebee, um, building out the form using circles. So we have our main line coming down like that. And it can be kind of any, any sort of accelerated curve or S curve like that. Um, within reason, whales are not snakes. They can't like bend backwards on themselves. They're not long enough and they have too much mass. <laughs> um, but they can they can get they can twist into some pretty pretty exaggerated forms here, but we're we're keeping it we're keeping it cool. Um, not not pushing it too far. So we have the circles. I'm going to use four. Um, typically, you know, with bugs, we'd use three um, for the head, the thorax, and the behind. But for this whale, because he's much longer, it's harder to represent the tail end as just a third mass, so we're just gonna break it down into two little balls and stack them. Um, with uh, Stack them with that line of action running directly through the middle of them. And you can, you can see how the form is sort of built for you already. You didn't really have to think about it. So from there, you just sort of like link them together here and you have something that already kind of looks like a whale does that make sense yeah yeah that's good <laughs> yeah and like I mean, if you give him a little arm here, about halfway down, give him a little arm, little paddle coming off the side, detail in the tail a little bit. Their tiny little dorsal nubbin is adorable. Um, you have a perfectly serviceable whale if you paint that blue. <laughs> and now you get into, you can get into all the craziness that we've been doing. Um, like with this skull, trying to do this whale skull in perspective, and just like basic two-point perspective. Um, 
So here you just have your big and your big ocean cylinder coming at you, but like quite foreshortened. So you have <laughs> these vertebrae. back into the distance um, that's that's kind of like a very very simple explanation for the for the line of action and you use that to build a, any form around basically um, and it provides a nice guideline and honestly that's that's all there is to the lesson if you're gonna focus on anything focus on getting that interesting, nice, like, flowy curve to, uh, to show the spine, and then just build your masses around that, um, and they naturally will fall into place, which is cool. You don't really have to do much work after that point. You can focus on the painting, which is probably what you want to do, right? You don't want to have to painstakingly render this thing I just want to get to painting it so it looks like a banana it looks like a banana good <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it like that's, so that's what it should look like yeah this one looks like a banana right Can you show how to do the tail from sideways the tail <laughs> the I was immediately tempted to do that like whale tail but mm. that's not no the tail the tail sideways um is really a disservice to whale tails unfortunately <laughs> Because from the side, unless unless it's pushing into some bunch of water and like one side of the tail is lifting up, um, it's it's basically just like a little like a little donut, <laughs> like a little yeah, because yeah. it's a flat mass from the side. Um, it's like looking at a frisbee like this. <laughs> It just yeah. doesn't really look like a frisbee. Um, no, if I make the banana shape that you make, it looks like a tail. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a lot easier. Yeah, a whale. A whale appears, and lo, that's. A, I like the really chunky one. Brana's is really chunky. He's fat. <laughs> He's a fat whale. I don't know. I want to show because <laughs> that's adorable. Banana whale. <laughs> banana whale. But yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Just this little banana creature. So, um, I'm going to grab a little piece of paper, whip out my watercolors, and paint one exactly like this tonight. And you guys can follow along. Um, with whatever you guys happen to have, if you're if you're doing dry media this evening. Um, this is a good opportunity to shade from the bottom up and if you're painting uh, it's just a it's a fun exercise in probably getting like a blue gradient um, just doing fun stuff with like under the sea theme I don't know so I will grab my uh, painting surface and paints and get going here we were thrown off a little bit so I didn't really have my palette ready, so just let me grab that. I could use the sides if you want. Um, no, let's leave it a little bit. I don't want to take like a half of the thing. Look at your whale. Oh, they're down here. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Hi, Jackie, Mr. Dream. Um, so one of the reasons we were delayed is that the graphics card could not handle the streaming and my 2014 PowerPoint at the same time. So it's really my fault. Um, so I was gonna give the act an actual presentation that I gave in ecology 
well, it was animal or population dynamics, third year ecology. Um, I read and wrote a presentation based on a study in Quebec. Um, so I am probably still going to give that presentation while we paint our whales, but uh, you'll have to miss out on all my sick 20 year old graphics. So, well, 20 years of age, six year old graphics. You made that in grad school, or? No, not grad school, undergrad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was before I even, it was when I was still a biology student. I was like, yeah, I don't want to get my excerpt ready. It's all gone. But here we are. Just found a little piece of scrap paper. And I'm sure it's all right. Oh, you got sweet waters over there. Yeah. begins. It's okay. I just need the I need the pub component tonight. Yeah. That's what I need. Okay. Let's just get painting. Let's get Bob Rossi up in here. Let's chill out. That's what we need. You should take a big old swig of your tea. Should probably do that. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Mm. There you go. Love that three week old box of wine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll do a little outline here first. What? Put your gloves away again. I'm sorry, here. <laughs> I'm gonna. I kind of want to do just that, like, classic down flow. Mm -hmm. Let's start. Like that. Um. So I, I said for you guys to put your, um, your circular masses sort of like with a line running directly through the middle of them but and and that's a that's a good thing to do you should do that um, it'll help link your masses together a little more and then when you get used to that um, you can start treating it more like the spinal column of the whale uh, moving it to the top and then building those circular shapes, sort of hanging off of it, gives it a little more weight. It feels like these, these masses are pulling down. Um, there is still gravity underwater, just displaced. Is that how you'd put that scientifically? Gravity underwater, but displaced? There's more forces acting on you underwater. I'm not a physicist. <laughs> but water supports your weight hey. because of its density? Yes. 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 Okay. Because of its density. Oh, yeah. Um, one of the characteristics of the blue whale is that they're mind-bogglingly massive. <laughs> I'm not sure if you knew that. But I was actually having trouble 
rendering it in proportion in my little little demo here. Um, and this is how I drew it first. And this is more the proportion of a humpback whale. And that's taking like the size of the head and repeating it a couple times, normally three, right? You have your you know, top, third, torso, middle-ish, and then your legs. You know, you, you can break it down that way. <laughs> but these beings are so long, I just couldn't like grasp adding this much tail. But they really are. And so typically their head is like one, like from tip of the snoot here back to the, to the eye or that little attachment where you can see um, where the spine ends and the skull begins here. There's like a good, a good three to four of those. And so it's hard to like conceive of proportions like that. And I was struggling with that. So we're going to try and do that here. We're going to, keep this at like four um, and then really treat this like like a skull and have a little connection happening here like a small divot um, oh, that's how you do <laughs> okay it is a whale worm have these tiny little eyes and then we're doing a little erasing as well and cheating and then just like the honeybee you can start to foreshorten some of these so if I instead of having my tail go out this way, I could have it kind of curve. So there's a little bit of twist happening here. He was swimming and had to do a, an about face of sorts. And this way we can kind of cheat getting our whale tail. Because everyone, everyone wants to see that. Everyone wants to paint it. It's still going away from us though, so we gotta... <laughs> what? <laughs> Hi, Barb. Hi. How's folks? We're just building out the forms of our uh, of our long whales here. And just trying to like really get that mass down. Because if it's hard, it's it's hard to convey how big the they are, uh, unless you do the thing where you have like a diver here who's like about this big. A hundred feet, tip to tail. Um. So each one of these circles that you drew for the mass of the whale represents 25 foot segment. So one fifth of that plus a little bit is the size of our human being. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get her out of hiding, Barb. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. 
Same people here. Holy, look at that. Look at that. It wasn't a total, just total bust. <laughs> oh, there's nothing like like working on your computer stuff all day and then having it like just crap out on you at the eleventh hour. Yes, <laughs> printers. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Do you have to print something for a class and you wait until you have to leave? Mm. You're not going to print it. Mm. Interesting. You have to sacrifice a certain amount of blood to the printer gods every time you need to. Pretty much. I understand. Some sort of pagan ritual. Do you remember the whales have this um this really really stretchy skin underneath their mouths is there a scientific term for that there probably is a scientific there is. term i read it earlier today you read it earlier oh no you stole my eraser you stole my eraser i see i see how this is okay and that that skin stretches um and folds and that's what gives these sort of ripples underneath the whale's mouth and this discoloration on whale stomachs not just blue whales some like humpbacks have this too um, all filter feeders says Brianna um, neat and that that skin is just a different it's a different color because it's a different density and a different elasticity and we can, we can kind of show that. Um, and it also gives us a wonderful opportunity to sort of build out, like we've been talking about, these con contour lines. So what's happening in the chat here? <laughs> yes, Kate, you're going to have to take very detailed notes for this session. Kate is about to be a proud mother. Well, not about. How long until the, the thing comes out of you? What? The, the beast four, emerges. Four months? Four months? Oh. So we are, were, I guess, helping them paint their nursery. An under the sea theme and it's going to be lovely but now that now that we're in quarantine I can't do as much painting over at their place so Kate has to has to take really detailed notes she's got to do it it's all it's all it's all them now hopefully Fingers crossed. That being said, I hope the uh, the time spent at home right now is treating everyone okay. And you're finding a lot of a lot of fun stuff to do with your time instead of mope. That's what I mostly do. I mostly mope. Hello. That's Brianna pouring paint. Because <laughs> yeah. she's a child. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't find my acrylic glue, so I'm using a Crayola Tempura paint. Oh, nice. The Tempura paint. Yeah. It's washable. Not food safe. A little messy with the tail here. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm really conveying that that twist at the back quite enough. And normally, if I feel that way, my problem is I'm just not pushing it far enough. What do you mean by that? Um, if you're gonna have a change in form, like I'm rendering a hand, but I want the hand to be tilted somewhat. What's the point of rendering it like this 
if you could render it like that. That would be like pushing the form a bit. And let's say it's like a like an evil wizard hand or something like that. You could have him casting a spell like this. You know, you have you have okay lines here. They'd follow the bones and it would be fine. Or you could have him like really, really pushing, right? Where you have this discoloration happening. And um, so the twist of the whale tail, <clears throat> excuse me, the twist of the whale tail, I was kind of doing it a little, a little bit flaccidly actually. So it's like here, and it's just going like that. Whereas he could be just like really full turning. So I, uh, I might actually just like carry through with this one in the orthographic view that we've been talking about from the side and maybe just paint another one uh, later tonight where he's actually doing that full that full twist and then try and work my composition from that state but here we can we can still make the tail a little bit interesting it's pushing down against water right so any tissue that isn't rigid would be kind of trailing behind the rigid tissue and we can show a little movement by doing something like that. Um. Ooh. Now I'll just take, I'm not going to get fancy with colors tonight. I'll just use, I think I'm just going to use two. I've been trying up to three and four. I don't think it's too many. I'm just going to do two. I'm going to mix this. Hold up some water on my palette. Oh, she wanted to show us how to make one color paint. Oh, yeah, no. Right no. Tempura paint's fun to use though. You can actually use it with watercolor. Because it's child safe, it can it's be washed off. Yeah. It's soluble. Um, and it's just like a very, very heavy gouache with like not very much pigment in it. Because it's cheap. But still fun. And affordable. So we have a little initial watercolor here, getting it into my brush. And something else I wanted to try tonight, now that this is saturated, is kind of two brushing it. <laughs> Night Barb, thank you for stopping by. Um, I have a video coming up uh, that I filmed um, of, a, of a very, very, very generous donation box that I got to open. And Barb was the very, very generous person who sent it to me. So um, maybe stay tuned for that because it's you get to you just get to watch Devin have a, his own personal Christmas and kind of squee for like, yeah a good 10 minutes it was amazing so thank you thank you thank you so much barb can't tell you what that means unfortunately i can't i'm not using much of the stuff that you donated tonight i'm being quite precious with it and like reorganizing the uh the studio kind of around it um what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna brush in some semi-clean water before I put any pigment in. Ooh. Just get like a really light wash. And something I want to get really good at with marine life 
and just underwater scenes, I guess, in general, is uh, rendering those those light shafts, mm. um, that dapple, the surface, um, the surface facing surfaces, I guess, underwater. And watercolor can do that in like stunning ways, um, but you really have to plan ahead. Uh, I'm just not quite there yet with it. I always end up either going in a little too hard with my initial wash and not doing this sort of prelay, or just kind of like doing a too general mid-tone block in and then the light doesn't really pop, but we are going to just get some color in there. How is yours going? <laughs> I think it's so cute. Just watch your tutorial because that was so fun because you just like explained. I know when people try and like do different things, so it's just like a shallow bit of and it's great. That's what we're going for. We're not trying to overthink it too much. Unless you are trying to overthink it, in which case, you know, it's a worthy goal. So long as that's what you're setting out to do, you know? Trying to be all art sensei about it. Yeah. I can take a little bit of water and try and put it back into that upward edge and like push paint away from it because I want to try and have some control over that area. Ooh, I pushed a little too far there. Oh. Yeah, that was wonderful. <laughs> that was wonderful. Um, so here I'm just sort of like counting on the uh, watercolor drying a little bit lighter than when you put it down and I'm gonna use gravity to help get that water and pigment right because the water is carrying the pigment to drain downwards and I'm gonna get a little towel here I actually might need to prop it up there we go. Wonderful. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. How come the water doesn't just fall down and save you when you do that? Um because of surface tension. I think, or adhesion. I forget which one is which. But because I did that initial block in, um, like if I if I took a wet brush and touched this very wet area, it would all just sort of like run down. Mm -hmm. And if I it. yeah, and if I tilted it anymore, um, gravity would overcome friction here, and it would just like fall. So I just I just had to be careful with it. Yeah. So you. 
people say that watercolor is like very unpredictable and it is but um there's these little things you can do to sort of control the chaos like block in your uh, bl basically blocking in your shape in water which is kind of cool I love it. What if we just made like a like a ten minute video that was a whale painting tutorial with your science facts in it? Yeah. I wanted like I wanna show I want to show what it like what we had planned. It feels almost it feels too bad to. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe people could like show it to kids, or something. Like an yeah. educational video. I don't know. Yeah. Let us know if you I would show it to kids. I no, I, you should facts. still give some science facts. Yeah. Be like crash course and the art experiment or whatever it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, yes, Alicia. If you guys are like actively looking for stuff, that would be really cool. We should do that. If there's any way we could help programs and stuff. Do little whale animations. Oh my god. I'm getting all PBS about it. I was thinking that if I just sort of, while this is drying here, kind of pulled some of this darker pigment up a bit, it might start to look like it was, it was being dappled and just let it sort of spread out in the water that's there. Does that read on stream? Is it? Yeah. Cool. Were you watching a documentary either yesterday or the day before about blue whales? Actually, yeah. probably both yesterday and the day yeah, we've before. We've been <laughs> cramming content. <laughs> and I didn't realize how special they were. Yeah. But uh, you can identify whales by their speckle patterns on their tails or their their backs, and submit photos to like the International Whale Database. <laughs> And then they can track where the whales are if you oh, see one. Cool. I love knowing that there's an international whale database. Yeah. It's just some wholesome science. Yeah, I'm just making sure that everybody has an idea. Mm hmm. Ooh, that's pretty dark. But I guess if I brought that level of pigment up into those into those areas it's almost making him look skinny I don't want that he's flubbery he's a big flubbery boy I do have a very long tail so you do have a weird long tail Just erupted paint. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> Every whale. Oh 
don't know. Oh, I looked away for a second. Uh, got a little nubbin. He's kind of in a terrible spot. He's got a little nubbin accidentally. It's right, it's right there. <laughs> That's really bad. It's a she whale. Are you thinking of maybe doing turtles next week? Yeah. And I was going to try oil painting. I have half an oil painted turtle, so I thought I'd finish him on the stream. So sea turtles? Yeah, yeah, probably sea turtles. All turtles are cool, but sea turtles are like... They're really cool. They're huge. One of my earliest memories is of sea turtles. Really? Like yeah. No, in Hawaii. Oh. My parents took me to Hawaii when I was three. It's one of those times where, you know, parents need a break, but they still have to take their kid. <laughs> so they just stuck me in a little life vest and me in the pool basically but i remember staring over the edge of this boat looking down off the front of it i was wearing a power rangers life jacket whoa that's a good detail yeah and there were these huge turtles underneath the boat kind of swimming along with us they were big and they were all gnarled too they had seen some shit I tried to really get some texture in this guy. Hmm. Those look like they're like they can blend pretty well. This one says faster, this one says faster. Cool. How's everyone coming along with theirs? Nice. And I'm really working on trying to get a whole bunch of, like a range of saturation. Um, out of just one color, which is a really, really cool thing that watercolor sort of excels at. This looks like a kid's book illustration. I really like it. Nice. Oh, it's so 
do it. Mm. Patience, Yanlin. Patience. Seldom do I have it. Like I know that it will dry. Not today. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. I think not today. No, indeed. We'll take a clean brush here. Try and strategically pull out some highlights. It is indeed Let it breathe moistly no. on you. No, they only breathe moistly. <laughs> Luckily, it's like heavily salinated, so. Yeah. Also, hello, the giant. Welcome. Unless you've been here the whole time, in which case, thank you. Really? I remember it. Nice. Yeah, we uh we had a bit of a bit of a false start this evening, unfortunately something i my my laptop basically almost melted so this is this is a this is a less structured one it's hard to say that having only done three but we're trying to build a bit of a format uh but this troubleshooting kind of derailed that brianna wins a wife of the year award for keeping me going live she's like, still do it and i did and and there's eight viewers which is huge so thank you guys i hope you're having fun um making some stuff see i think i think that helped pulling out it's a wonderful thing about watercolors as well as while it's still wet you can kind of draw the pigment out of where you've placed it and it gives it this like really soft transition hmm? I, I was really reacting to looks on the stream oh. and not your voice in real time that's hilarious brianna's like doing this this like herculean task of wearing headphones and monitoring the stream while i sit next to her and speak so that must be a real must be a wild ride up in that head right now <laughs> No, that's hilarious. But it gives it like this nice, yeah, when you pull out the uh, pigment. Oops. Give that little, give that sense of form. Um, it doesn't have to be, like it can, it can dry as well and you just reactivate it by putting water over top of it if you're using watercolor. Um, and you can still achieve pretty much the same effect. Ooh, yeah, that would be a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> I 
certain kinds of screens, like the one that just came about, I don't think they would like to play watercolor. But you had already said it. Mm -hmm. But I was going to... I said tiggers. Yeah, you said tiggers. And you were like, what? <laughs> they are wonderful things. So, I want to keep this white here. And then I'll erase this pencil mark. I think that's my favorite part. Landon drops in and the chat just immediately gets ornery. It's great. <laughs> oh god, everyone. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, bigger brushes are almost always better. They teach you more. And they teach it to you very painfully. <laughs> there is a shot in this um, documentary that we were watching yesterday that was just, was really cool. I'd never really seen underwater photography like this but it was a i think it was a humpback whale mm. it was a humpback whale just sort of drifting about five feet above this like flat just the flat surface of the of the ocean bed but it was like it was so cool it really looked like it was just sort of hovering slowly <laughs> with like a weird like cgi render and it just gave like context. Normally you see them floating in this formless blue. Yeah. But having the ground there was just wild. So I kind of wanted to paint that in. Um, and then have him casting a shadow. Ooh. So it'd be from this direction down. Yep. Hello, Bonnie and Pavel. <laughs> When you're a blue whale, size matters. True. True. Brianna can tell you why. No way. Um, blue whales have too much no natural predator because nothing can hunt them. You'd think that about moose too. Hmm. But no. Or like wolves and stuff, right? Yes. So they live mostly in the ice then. So cool. having this like cast shadow would give some spatial context maybe just by imagining the shot you feel proper about the <laughs> say art stuff do with the art you're an excellent mod dear thank you says there are three subspecies of blue whales which is true and one of them is called a pygmy blue whale which is extra hilarious because even though it's the smallest blue whale it is still 80 S feet long still a blue whale <laughs> but pygmy and the scientist who named it just had a riot with that they're like oh it's actually a subspecies <coughs> let's call it pygmy Pygmy. It's a very small, no. horribly well. Yeah. Excellent, excellent dad joke. Blew my mind. Mm 
the smallest species of the organism. Yeah. <laughs> They got a participation award, basically. Oh. Well, they're called subspecies because they can interbreed, mm. but they tend not to. Mm. I think. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep it tilted. Actually, that's gonna look really cool when that dries. Um, I thought maybe I could. Uh, use some of this blue now and really dilute it and give the whole background a bit of a wash and then maybe that would help this this dappled effect stand out more still not really sure I'm selling it I don't the shapes that the light makes when it's distorted by water, or like it feels random, but it's random, quite spe specific kind of random that I haven't really just spent enough time with, with like the reference and stuff. So, um, starting a 30 day challenge though, to try and do that and spend more time with like specific specific artsy goals so maybe I should post about it I kind of already did on my story but um, going to try and make me a university course simulate style. Hmm? university style yeah I guess yeah um, so next Monday I'm going to school very exciting. We should take like first day of school pictures. <laughs> exactly. It, it it yeah. The uh the way the light moves is like when when people render even just the surface of water well, it's mind blowing. Um, yeah, it's absolutely mind blowing. <laughs> so with the background here, I'm going to try and brush it into some of the edges to like loosen them up a bit. And maybe he blends into the background a little bit. Um, and then when this pencil line gets erased out, I think that would look pretty cool. Yes, purple and green hues neutralize. I did not know that. Yeah. Today I learned. Mm -hmm. Those don't necessarily happen. Brown uh, or um, blue and brown, so like deeper orange tones neutralize to a lovely gray. Ooh, I have to be very careful here. Look, I just base I just clipped that moist area. Don't you hate that when that happens? And then now that this little pocket of water here is now at at risk of just draining into this um, dampened area. It's, you have to be very careful. Moist. You can't have a moist canvas. Just a little bit too much. No. What was the name of the documentary we watched? Uh, there were two. There were two. There were three. There were three. But there were three. three. Beware by Jane Fuda. Um, one was called Kingdom of the Blue Whale by mm. National Geographic. Mm-hmm. One was called. It was the Crazy Nature's Oceans from 2010. Narrated by. Uh, 
Uh, None other than <laughs> um, 007's Pierce Brosnan. The worst. And he really, I mean, I, really tries to be David Attenborough, and it doesn't work. I have no, like, hard feelings for Pierce Brosnan, really. Oh, I just, <gasps> see, I did the thing. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, I knew I would. <coughs> yeah, clean it up. Yeah, we're going to be doing this for, um, making this content for children. Just need a new channel if we do that, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with Pierce Brosnan, per se. Yeah, except when he tries to sound, like, wistful. For a nature documentary. No, he's a complete dilf. Like, yeah. like, he's a silver fox, and he's going, like, the tides slowly churn around the planet. Not even British. He's just like half British. Pierce Brosnan's English. What? Yeah. You can't be you can't be 007 and oh. not be. Yeah, I guess that's true. English. I actually think the Brits would riot. Oh, and then I watched a James Cameron one about deep sea filming uh, and I fell asleep halfway through because it was just James Cameron like wanking about cinematography and how good he is at everything that sounds like Elisa texted us her whale oh. I love that that's for me let me see let me see wonderful i love it it's like oh. lovely broad strokes yeah. but you still like that's what's so cool about this center line is that is brushed around it that's lovely lisa thank you so much for sending that that's wonderful cool it's like it's kind of abstract but you can still tell it's a whale and and if you're painting abstractly, still using this idea of the center line and building the forms around it will help whatever form you're trying to show still read in the abstraction of that form, which is like, and Picasso did that very well as sort of the cliche example. round planet not flat planet oh mm -hmm. i haven't seen that one planet earth 2 is one of my favorites planet earth 2 is just like it's it's i've never seen brianna like perspire so much watching television just i was just like yelling yeah simultaneously cheering on the like the prey animals and the predators because you're like man i know they gotta eat but you're just like screaming at that gecko to get away from the snakes like them i don't really want to do anything else to it <laughs> it's just a whale so sweet. it's just a whale we could do some uh watercolory stuff to it y'all know i love that watercolor darker blue mm. but i can't i don't have one mix red into your light blue oh or purple or purple and i'll bring in another color then you could mix um small amounts of brown into your blue as well just be careful not to make it gray
become mud but it might also be lovely who knows mm. so it's a, a it's another BBC done in a British humory sort of way oh. that British humor man that's the one with Dean Fry in the parrot There's one with Dean Fry and he's there with this like museum parrot that's rarely seen and the parrot starts like trying to mate with its friend. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you know that Stephen Fry's actually never wrong? So he's just a bit of this man. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Chaos. Yeah. Get yeah. That's it. That's that's the one. It looks so cool on the screen. It just appears. Yeah. It's because of all of my drop frames. There we go. Oh, cool. Does that look cool? On stream? Yeah. Why are you leaning on the table? It's fine. It's watercolor. Sure about green as a darkening tone. <laughs> Fine. Oh. Gives me anxiety to do. There have been several of those where I just drop it like directly on his face. It's really hard to gauge when you're sitting down, like not standing over it. So <laughs> it was a very real risk. But we could do this thing, like tilt it up. It's gonna run right through his nose though. So I might take this one and hoover it up with my brush a bit. Those ones won't run, but these ones will. Even if I just turn it down here. Look like World War Two mines. Mm -hmm. Like, um, nautical mines. Mm. I bet. Would we be able to see them if we drained the ocean? Oh my god. <laughs> drained the ocean. Drained the Ocean is a History Channel relic, I think. Is it a relic? I don't know. I just, I just don't think it would get made today, unless it it is unless it is recent. I really don't know what like live TV looks like. Like, what does network television look like anymore? I don't think I've watched it in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there are some. There are some. Um, nautical mines in the in the mural we have at Kate's so that she can raise her children teaching them about the dangers of war <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey is the Finding Nemo vibe yeah oh that's still so cool that whole sequence, just like. Ooh, Brianna's getting super artsy. <laughs> I'm getting mad at it. 
Actually, not really. Thank you, Stash. I am glad you're obsessed. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll just let this one dry. Big hearts all around. Brietta got a little too expressive <laughs> with hers. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. It could be salvaged. <laughs> Don't worry. It's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. It's fine. It's fine. We don't mind. What if we did like a a distant wheel? In the background. So we're going to start with that line of action. And I know she's meant to be following instructions, but. I did for the shape. You're not supposed to be doing anything. It's really cute, though. I'm really struggling with these conversions. They are a little more free-flowing. And thus slightly harder to control, I think. I'm not really that sure. Oh, look, I went against my line of action. Not good. The tail is going to look like a nubbin with a smaller nubbin at that angle. Nubbin. Like we talked about uh, earlier, it's like you you know so well what a whale tail is supposed to look like coming out of the water that you try and paint it in this side view and it is just, it doesn't look right. Um, so you might have to try a different, a little bit of a different angle. Do blue whales hang out together? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. This is somewhat scientifically accurate, I think. Well. My braiding group should be for this species. They're more solitary in the ocean than just the whale size, but. More solitary in the ocean? Or, like then sorry, in like. Like they're yeah, absolute. When they're just, when they're just hanging out. Absolute party animals when they're on the beach. But when they go somewhere. It sounded like a beached whale joke. That wasn't meant to be. I was thinking like beach party, but I was kind of flat actually. I just been sitting here and it's so nice to have a Don't say that. There. Don't say that. It's going to be fine. Where's a Chicago? Well, 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 <laughs> it looks like we have a punster here. I hope no one's feeling blue about their outcomes. Mm. 
careful now these jokes man i'm gonna be laughing so hard i won't be able to speak i'll be blubbering I just feel another pun coming. I feel it. The giant's cooking one up. It's being cooked right now. Depending on how bad it is, he'll become an enemy of the people. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave this. I like it. Done in one color. I'll just uh, wait for it to dry and then erase the uh, the pencil marks from underneath. There it is. All done. All done. So maybe guys stay tuned for uh, a video with a sort of structured tutorial in it. We're going to try and do like, smaller videos and put them on the YouTube channel um, throughout the week. And uh, I've really been thinking about doing the like the science and the art stuff together. Um, talked about that a little bit earlier. And I think it'd be really fun. And then we could use the uh, the stream as almost like a like a testing ground for some of the info and me just getting you know the a little bit of mileage with trying to run a tutorial and teaching a little bit. I hope the the whole idea of this flow, just this simple shape, you can draw this hundreds of times and it will still be lovely. Like <laughs> there's like, I don't know, they're beautiful. When in doubt, if I'm having a bad day, I either normally paint a bear or a, or a whale. more let me make this a little more part of the background here I need to have the background really visibly come down to this uh, plane here if I want it to read as a highlight and not just as a strange like a mission in my painting Just take a bigger brush here. Um, hey guys, I think can we, we're gonna call it like do our soft cap right now. We've been live for an hour and a half here. We had a bit of a bit of a weird start. So we'll try and get that figured out. <laughs> now keep going. It's good material. We don't issue bans for for pun craft here. And this is a really, really nice, like, simple painting. 
you can always kind of come back to. Oh. It's so cute. I looked at it like like three minutes ago and it was just it was kind of it was kind of smeary. Yeah, yeah. And then in the last like two minutes here, it came came together. So here's Brianna's whale. Whales, aren't those adorable? <laughs> <laughs> well done. They really look like a kid's like a children's book illustration. I love the roundness. Yeah. Hmm. Just swimming. I love it. Okay, guys, thank you so much to everyone who came out this evening. Um, <laughs> yes, V V round boy, V round. V -round. Um, we're gonna we're gonna keep doing this every week. We decided that um, even if it's even if it's a bit much, like i don't know it's meant to be we're meant to be pushing ourselves a little bit to try and just get more get more content out and get better at doing it um so this is going to be a weekly thing um but we're also going to supplement it a little bit with hopefully with more videos i've been trying to have the camera on a bit more and i'm still very very like very tense about the whole ordeal so well feels a little bit better though now like i I don't think I would have been able to troubleshoot the stream like I did today. Optimal foraging theory. Mm-hmm. Yes. Speed paint and optimal foraging theory that any teachers out there are welcome to use for their kids. <laughs> um, who knows? Well, we could try and get a video like that out next week or something. So... We have the whole setup here, we might as well. And we had it all prepared and everything that kind of blew up. Um, yeah, so see, we have 10 people. Yeah. Uh, another thing we were thinking about is what to do with the paintings we make on the stream. Hopefully, you know, hopefully we accumulate a lot of them over the course of the, of the year. Um, and as I get better at like <laughs> trying to do the tutorial and painting at the same time, or just even just chatting and painting at the same time, these might get a get crisp, get a little more, a little more crisp. Yeah. We could raffle them or, or make them part of uh, I don't know, like competitions or something like that. I don't know. Um, let us know. Let us know if you have like a neat idea for something like that. Okay, guys, y'alls are the absolute best. Thank you again so so much for coming out and supporting us again. It means the world. It really does. So see you guys and stay tuned. Thank you. Stay tuned for our video, which we which we just committed to doing now, just like right <laughs> here. Brianna didn't really have a say in it either. We're just going to do that. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Love you all very much. Stay very safe out there and uh, keep, keep doing little paintings. Try and do another whale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>